Um, okay. Hi, guys. Um, thanks for coming to the artist talk for the Contemporary Northwest Print Invitational 2020. I'm super excited about it. Um, I'm Nikki. I'm the vice president of Seattle Print Arts, but I also work at Davidson Galleries. I've been coordinating um, the show and sort of in go between with everybody. It's been really, really wonderful um, to get to know everyone. Um, yeah, but I'll be behind the scenes. If there's any sort of technical issues or things like that, um, just shoot me um, a private message and I'm happy to help with that. Um, or if you just have questions in general um, that I can help pitch to Claire since she's gonna be hosting tonight and introducing everybody. Um, and then I'm gonna turn my own video off and I'll be in the background. Thanks, Nikki. Welcome, everybody. I'm Claire Hargi. I am the social media person for Seattle Print Arts. Um, and I'm really glad to be here and glad that you're here. And especially glad that Amanda and Hilda are here to talk about their work. And um, I want to talk a little bit about the show and um, also our juror, and, and then we'll start the conversation with uh, Kelda and Amanda. Um, and first I wanna acknowledge the land that we're gathering on as the traditional land of the Duwamish who are still here. And I'm really grateful to, to be here and our gathering for Seattle Print Arts and the Contemporary Northwest Print Invitational wouldn't be happening if not for the Duwamish. So, Grateful for that and also would encourage everybody to check out Real Rent um, to start paying uh, rent every month uh, to help support current Duwamish tribe members. So glad to be here. Um, the Contemporary Northwest Print Invitational is a partnership between Seattle Print Arts and Davidson Galleries. So this is our second year. And this year we were really excited to have Thea Kire Tagle be our juror, and she brought a really unique perspective to jurying. Um, she's a scholar, a curator, an educator, and a writer, and her research uh, investigates so socially engaged art, site-specific performance, visual cultures of violence, and grassroots responses to political and environmental collapse within the greater Pacific Rim. And so her perspectives on what makes up the best of Pacific Northwest printing were really interesting for me. She grouped her um, selections into four rough categories. Um, and those categories are portraits of resilience and resistance, nature in the round, sea or sky and sea and soft focus, and space deconstructed. And today, Kelda and Amanda, both of their works kind of fall into her category of space deconstructed. And what she wrote about that was, um, these prints function as spatial studies that abstract sites we believe we already know, such as the Duwamish River. In their effective use of layering, these prints engage us multisensorially and effectively. I do not need to see a mountain to be moved by the waterscapes and landscapes of this gorgeous reg region or to recognize beauty amongst the disorder and difficulty of the city. And one of the things that was interesting for me from Thea's um, perspective was that she was deliberately uh, choosing work that might not make a good postcard for tourists. Um, and so I think that as we go into this conversation today, um, maybe we can kind of have that as a <laughs> starting point. Um, but I would love to have Amanda and Kelda, um, rather than me introduce you, maybe talk a little bit about yourselves, just say where you're, um, where you are right now, um, where you've been working. Um, this is a very sp specific time in history, right? There's a pandemic, uh, social uprising and revolution. Um, kind of the disintegration of capitalism <laughs> in our country. And um, we're all, I mean, to some extent or not, you know, more isolated and more connected than ever. And so I think that 
the show and these conversations are a reflection of that. So um, Amanda, if you wouldn't mind going first, I know that you are in your studio. So welcome. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yeah, welcome to my studio. Um, it's interesting because you said that we're, you know, more connected in some ways now. And I don't feel that way. I feel really less connected. Um, I'm used to um, physical uh, connection and um, seeing people face to face, reading their faces and that sort of thing. And so, um, and, and really love the one on one. I love uh, being in a meeting and potentially just having like a little side comment here, you know, so that doesn't happen on zoom. Uh, <laughs> so it's very, um, I feel a little bit uh, less, um, less connected with the world. And I find like the things that I used to love to do, um, like go to exhibitions and uh, make sure that I was potentially a portion, a portion of the art world, like being a viewer as well as you know participating in other ways um, has sort of diminished for me um, things are happening online and they're never at a time that I can be free so I'm feeling a little bit less connected mm -hmm. I am in my studio I live in Shoreline this is at the back of my house um, I have a, a building that I built back here in 2008 which is when I uh, left Ballard works um, where I uh, worked for a number of years, really loved the group of people that I was working with. Cappy, I know from there, there are a bunch of people I know from there. Um, and um, so I moved here. So now pretty much I get to see uh, my boyfriend. <laughs> Who's not a big talker. <laughs> To say the least. Sometimes he's too big a talker, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope that we can, even though it's a virtual, you know, make some connection and you know, give you a little bit of space for, you know, sharing and connecting. And uh, I want to um, encourage people that if you have questions while we're speaking, please type them in the chat and we'll kind of uh, go back and forth. Um, to have a conversation with you <laughs> in this conversation. So thank you, Amanda. Yeah. And Kelda, if you'd like to introduce yourself a little bit. Yeah, thank you so much, Claire and Nikki and all of Seattle Prince um, and Thea and Davidson. So, so many folks to thank. It's really um, such a pleasure to be part of this group. I really love the show, what I'm seeing of it online. And, and um, I do look forward to seeing it in person too. Um, my name is Kelda Martinson. I use she, her pronouns, and I am um, actually in Portland right now in my um, in-laws house, and this was the one room that um, we've done a little bit of cleaning <laughs> in. So um, I walked around the house with a laptop, like looking at various backgrounds of um, sousaphones and boxes and um, Brick of brack, so this is where I landed. Um, it's been a really a tough summer for so many reasons um, and for everyone, um, but we are sort of working with Michael. Uh, my husband's parents are um, ill, dealing with various um, conditions, and and so it's really. really uh, think a lot about like all the time I I spent not seeing them in order to protect them from the coronavirus and and then now it's like that's just been something that we're wrestling with so um you know when there's sort of all of a sudden another life or death issue facing your elders um it kind of shakes you out of this um sort of fear about this virus and so anyway that's where i'm at my head is totally um in a lot of places and not necessarily with my art right now um so I'm grateful for this chance to talk and, and to kind of recenter with this community. Um, as Amanda said, I just totally miss seeing everyone in person. Um, I'm used to seeing Amanda a lot in person and, and all of my colleagues and, and now we um, all do it remotely. So, but that said, I have found um, 
Zoom to be an intimate space at times. I've cried over Zoom, <laughs> um, laughed, you know, had happy hours, had classes, had um, students really open up and be extremely vulnerable. So, um, yeah, I thank everyone for tuning in. I know that that we're not necessarily looking for more time on the computer these days. So I appreciate that people are taking time to be here. Thank yes. you. Yeah. Thank you, Kilda. And thank you for um, being here tonight. Yeah, I know it's a really hard time and our hearts go out to you and your father-in-law and we hope the best for his health and their health. Thank you. Um, I think, uh, yeah, I think that there is so much that is sad and worrisome, um, angering, <laughs> depressing, um, weighty about this time. And um, I mean, I, I guess I wanted to start the conversation just as a jumping off point with your prints, and then we can kind of go from there. Um, and specifically talking about place um, because of the the nature of what Thea was thinking about and the um, the show title of you know this regional um, printmaking show um, and so maybe Amanda if you wanted to start talking about a little bit with um, what I thought was really interesting for yours was um, you've been doing a residency a Duwamish River residency is that correct? Yeah for the last few years. And so I wonder if you could talk about that a little bit and then um, about that and your prints and kind of how you chose what to submit and this particular print maybe. Yeah, um, so I, um, sorry, I didn't, uh, at the beginning, I didn't thank all y'all, but I, I thank you all. And Seattle Print Arts has been like a home for me for many years when I first came to, Seattle re came back here. I um, uh, was a was a board member and really found a home at Seattle Print Arts. So I'm I'm really happy to be here because of that as well as all of the other reasons. Um, so yeah, um, the uh, I do a um, I'm part of so. <laughs> Um, Sue Danielson and Fiona McGuigan um, put together a residency many moons ago. I am a, one of the most recent uh, people who were added to the um, group. And for the past three years, I have uh, spent a week um, down by the Duwamish, um, really just slowing down, thinking about um, what it's like to be in place. Um, and so a lot of the work that I do is um, in the studio, including this piece that's in the show, is not actually made on the river, but comes out of the mach machinations that uh, my brain is sort of chewing on, um, uh, you know, from that time. So um, I, I find it just a, an absolutely um, beautiful residency. I'm very sad that this year we're not going to be able to get together and do it, not only because of, um, you know, health issues, but also uh, because of the West Seattle Bridge uh, being closed. Um, so uh, we're, we're trying hard to get together and, and work a little bit um, elsewhere, doesn't matter. Um, but um, so why did I uh, put this in? Um, yeah, I think it was just one of the pieces that I, it just, I still love it. And I thought that other people should see it. Um, I really think it's interesting uh, on the Duwamish uh, being there and seeing how there are 13 of us, I believe, um, how we all work differently um, and kind of looking around and seeing what other people are doing and how we kind of go back to um, our studios and make things out of what, what has happened there. Um, a lot of people are really um, working with the more um, landscape uh, based parts of the river and for some reason I'm always drawn to the industrial 
um, always love sitting across from, you know, the cement factory or, you know, um, in the different uh, places that sort of are, you know, these walled edifices that um, are um, set up uh, on this absolutely beautiful estuary where, you know, birds come through. And so just that, that um, difference between the two parts. Cool. Thank you. Um, I guess for me, like um, the reading a little bit about what you like some of your process and um, how, you know, it's not a direct translation, but um, kind of the, the building of layers, um, the using of different um, like print techniques, but then also the drawing and the painting. Um, I mean, do you feel like those that process speaks to how you're feeling on the river or no, not necessarily. I think that that process speaks to like me a little bit more, um, meaning like that I'm looking out at the river and the process of building up um, sort of talks to all of the things that um, I'm constantly hiding or you know, the, the walls that you put up so that people, you know, um, see you in a certain way. So um, th that layering sort of talks to that um, in, a, in a really intense way, but it's also printmaking, right? It's how I learned printmaking, that you always are building in layers and, um, and that's why printmaking sort of really works for me. Mm -hmm. ways. But then adding the drawing and painting, I, I was always interested because people were um, always saying, well, I really want to get this line like it's charcoal. And I'm like, well, then just use charcoal, right? So it's that, um, it's that sort of building and then also not being afraid to go in with a different medium and just sort of obliterating it and rebuilding it and obliterating it and rebuilding it. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Cool, and I think that I, I see that also in Kelda's work um, in terms of like uh, not being afraid to use different um, techniques and mediums and moving things around. Um, Kelda, do you wanna talk a little bit about that or? Yeah, I think that that's something Amanda and my work has in common and I, I do wanna spend some time thinking about it before I just, this piece of Amanda's, um, I, I wanted to talk about how it captures the, for me being on the Duwamish is like this super intense drastic sense of scale. Like there's just these tiny reeds and these like, um, and then like the ships or the, you know, the cargo, it's just massive and these cement plants. I mean, I, I have this memory that I um, cherish on the Duwamish, which was just seeing this little seal had like bobbing down the very center and just flanked by like cliff of industry. And um, I think this piece that Amanda chose is really gets at that, like these narrow passages, like between these fields of color, like you can only go this one little narrow way, but there's like this huge um, expanse and landscape that it sits upon. Um, I've been discovered by children. Just a minute. Okay. Um, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, I just love, I, I don't know, Amanda, if you feel that, um, comes through, but yeah, there's just, and also the teeny tiny marks and these like huge washes of these slopes that you have in the work. I mean, it really puts me right there. And then also the Duwamish feels so, there's there's a sorrow there, but there's also such a pride and, and such a, a richness. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Um, and then in terms of deconstructing space, I was, I'm really grateful to hear um, what Thea said, I hadn't heard those remarks before, so that helps me understand um, how they thought I fit in the show and how this work fits in the show. And um, as a purely 
uh, process way of working through, first of all, I, I made this piece for the show. It didn't exist. Um, part, mostly because I don't work in this size usually, like the, um, I can't remember now what it is, 14 by 18 or something, but it's um, not something I ever, I have. I usually have something very little or much larger. So that already puts me in these like interesting and new parameters to have sort of um, a size to work within. And it just wasn't working. I mean, it was just like failure after failure after failure. And finally I just folded it and like really creased it and then made it an accordion book. And then I was home, you know, then I was like, okay, I can understand this now, it's a book. Um, so even though this is framed flat on the wall, it does accordion. Um, and if it were out of the frame, you could operate it in that way. And then I had four different pages, which you can sort of see they're um, very tall, uh, taller, thinner pages. Um, and that allowed me to think a little bit more in um, opposing terms and using photographs sort of from a previous life of mine um, through travels. There's uh, plumes of smoke from Mount St. Helens and a picture from Maputo in Mozambique um, where I had spent a little time and, and then sort of this crossing into now, but I can't really, I don't wanna, there's no building that's iconic for me now, like to talk about this sense of place. Like for me, it's, it's much more comfortable to talk about a present landscape in more abstract terms um, where the past gets like more cemented into um, images and actual photographic references that I feel work, you know, just visually. I don't know if that's nostalgia or if that's just um, a natural draw to photography is and referencing the past, but um, that's how I see this piece. It's, I'm, I'm really happy that it, it spoke to the juror in that way because I feel that, that that is sort of um, this movement from, from referential to abstraction is, is the story I was trying to tell here. Great, thank you. Um, so I'm going to, if it's comfortable for you to, stop sharing so that then we can be um, just in conversation. Does that feel all right? Mm -hmm. Um, stop sharing my screen at least for a little bit and I can always share again. Um, uh, Nikki, let me know if that's a problem for videoing. <laughs> um, so just in terms of um, thinking also about, um, I guess, I guess sheltering in place um, in the pandemic um, and like loss of connection and printmaking being such a, being a way of connecting with people, like the, the option of going to a communal studio versus now when we're at home and making on our own, maybe making over Zoom with people, um, like, or maybe not making at all because it's a pandemic and, <laughs> So um, any comments or thoughts about that and like how that's affected your work or just like how, how you're dealing with that and. Um, uh, if it's okay, I'll start. Um, or we can just talk together. Um, but uh, I have not been making, I've been making um, little uh, experiments. I'll just say. <laughs> I've been doing some uh, chemograms, um, which is just painting with fixative onto a, um, uh, like a, a paper, uh, sorry, a photographic paper. Um, and thank you, John Taylor, uh, <laughs> for that paper. <laughs> um, uh, and then just sort of playing with those. They haven't been going, there's some just behind me here, but um, they haven't been going very, very much. But I, I, it's actually funny because today, this morning, I, I'm, we're doing a little remodel in our house. So we came, we come out here to go to the bathroom. <laughs> and this morning, like I came out early to go to the bathroom and I just started working. I just, it was like the first day that I started working. And I don't know if it's because I was like, well, I gotta, you know, <laughs> I gotta work because, you know, I gotta 
be a ma maker when I go, go and uh, have a talk <laughs> this afternoon. But um, so, um, so I spent some time today in here kind of just getting down to some work. So nice. Nice. And I mean, do you feel like uh, that lack of making or experimenting or I mean, are you feeling like you're you feel grief for that? You feel lost for that? Or do you just feel like it's fine right now because, you know, everything that's happening and you just need to... <laughs> Yeah, um, I, it's actually, um, you know, I am, I've always prided myself on being a doer, so not necessarily a, a deep thinker. I, I can think, but um, just a doer. And this whole thing has made me have to stop. And so whatever we need to do, it's, you know, this is given to us. So um, I just had to stop and think for quite a while. Um, and I think Yes, of course, I have uh, a lot of uh, um, sorrow that I'm not with people, um, especially in the printmaking studio. That's the reason I went into printmaking is because it was just such a great community um, that, you know, just was really supportive. Um, and um, so I do have grief for um, the lack of that. But I've been working in my studio by myself except for a little collaboration here and there, um, uh, for a while. Um, so, you know, it, I'm not, I'm not, you know, working at Pratt and that sort of thing. I have a press, I, you know, I have a screen press. I have all sorts of different things in my studio. Yeah. Thank but yeah, a lot of grief, but also knowing that it's what we might need at the moment mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it's to kind of, you know, I'm sorry to be like, but, uh, <laughs> but to, to kind of be able to, to think through what is going on a little bit. Mm -hmm. Not only the pandemic, but um, just how um, terrifying the, the um, federal government is and um, uh, just really wanting to support uh, people of color at this time and feeling really locked away um, still, so. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. How about you, Kelda? How's the, since we last talked, um, are you, so both of you are at North Seattle College. Mm -hmm. um, are you still having classes? Those are done. Are you still in preparation, never ending? <laughs> Yeah, Amanda's teaching this summer quarter, um, teaching screen print um, remotely. And um, I'm not teaching this summer. And I'll be teaching drawing in the fall, uh, which I should be preparing for, but haven't yet. Um, yeah, the loss of, of, when I think about the communal print studios um, that I'm involved with now, I really do think about North. I, of course, I um, think about Pratt always too, but um, North is sort of where those students like Amanda and I were, um, who kind of stumbled in and found our, our joy and our place in education and found ourselves as um, successful learners in that environment. Um, I don't want to speak for you too much, Amanda, but it's like, oh, no. that's how it feels. You're just really welcomed in a print studio, and, and we hope we can offer that to our students. And so it's, it does feel like that's, you know, a main reason we went into this work, potentially the reason, and, um, and we don't have that right now. So that feels like a loss for them. It's a loss for us. Um, but people are doing it and I mean Claire you're you're figuring out ways to still get the word out and still make um printing a communal and activist space um so I hats off to you because that's um it's very difficult right now with so many restrictions all around um yeah for me this is it's just been an exercise in like how to process the information like n never before. I mean, when we first were getting hints of lockdown, I remember sending this initial email out to just a 
core group of faculty in the community colleges and the printmaking around us and the universities thinking it was just like a two week thing like oh how are we going to finish this like two week term online like any ideas and it's sort of laughable now it's um i had no idea we'd be doing this for so long so then there was this time of just reading every article like processing it all be reading about how you should be unproductive in quarantine reading about how you should be productive in quarantine and so like learning how to filter all of that out and then now with um just learning how to be more active how to support um colleagues especially um our black colleagues on campus that are you know not heard in academia and and thinking about that um on the work side and also personal and um yeah it's just it's so much processing that i am also not having great output um and a huge part of that for me is not having childcare anymore so um but there's just little bits like i am doing a book exchange with puget sound book arts and that something arrives in the mail and i have to print on it and send it on its own so that means i have to get the ink out that means i have to roll up um that means i have to print a block that means my press can't be a table it has to stay open and uncluttered and then from that every time i make this small little wood block print and send it on its way in the mail another thing gets made another texture gets prepared you know just in the cleanup um i'm making more and then this show at Davidson got me into the studio. Um, I made a, a sort of a sister piece to it that um, that isn't in the show. So, you know, maybe that will launch something, something new. But as Amanda said, like, I want to show up to this talk as an actual maker. So deadlines are, are really crucial um, and accountability, you know, yeah, in this time. And Kelda and I were supposed to go, we were like two weeks from going to Puerto Rico for, um, southern graphics um right right when this all sort of hit and so we're we are, we've been mourning that uh together on our phones yeah. <laughs> yes um i i mean i wonder i mean i was and please uh i don't think i know that much but i think you were putting together a show for that kelda and amanda together or just kelda Kamala, it was Kamala and I. Okay, so Kamala and Kelda were putting together a show, and I mean, I can, yeah, I can imagine that not being able to have that occur would be really heartbreaking, and not being able to go, and then also, um, like, do you have any plans for where it might be now? Like, is there an online space or could it happen somewhere here where the perspective is obviously going to be different, the place is going to be different, and maybe it's something that would be really interesting. Yeah. Um, well, it's it's been said that this conference will still take place in 2023. And so I hope I can hold on to everyone's work till then. Um, but also uh, Tatiana Garmendia is in the show and she has been talking um, to Coca Gallery about some maybe potential room for it there. Um, right. But yeah, everything is totally in the open. But yeah, if anyone has a space, it's a really interesting show. Um, reacting to, yeah, North Seattle Gallery. Um, <laughs> The literature of the Puerto Rican diaspora and um, especially centered on artists of, um, you know, Puerto Ricans and, um, yeah, LGBTQIA authors and talking about, and, and also the Seattle artists are um, women and artists of color. So it's a really rich show. It's a lot of books, some zines um, and prints. So it might not be great online, or will it? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I I just don't have the bandwidth to to pull something online together, which is why I'm like so thankful for you and Nikki and Seattle Print Arts um, for doing this work. Because um, yeah, there were there's another show I was um, co curating for Soil this spring, and I just didn't like have the heart or the energy to pull it all online. It just felt like it wasn't the time. Um, yeah. And 
but I also thought through it a lot and realized how much work it takes. So thank you. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely a different experience and mm -hmm. I hope that, um, everyone who's able to go out, um, can try to see the show at Davidson. Cause I think that the experience of seeing Prince in person is going to be so much different. Um, you're going to see so many more details, um, of the work, um, and Davidson will be open for, um, by appointment, um, starting the 6th, uh, through the 31st, 30th, <laughs> the 30th, <laughs> um, and Kelda, I think that one of the things that, um, I know Nikki was wondering about, um, from your, um, kind of, you know, artist meet and greet that we did before to get to know you for the gallery and then, um, was talking about um, wanting to be a writer. Um, can you speak to that a little bit or like wishing that you um, were a writer? <laughs> yeah. um, I, I mean, I just am very much drawn to short fiction and poetry and I always have been and I feel like it was actually poets and short fiction writers that pushed me into being an artist. Um, you know, I grew up in the trades and my father was in there. So for me, art was very artisan and, and functional and it was about the crafting of an object. Um, and it wasn't until I had phenomenal um, poetry teachers and, and literature teachers in high school that I um, sort of realized the, the conceptual terrain that awaited and, and the imaginative landscape I could jump into there and apply the technical skills to. And so I just feel at every turn I have uh, literature to thank and I'm not as, I, I like to write, um, but I write like emails and assessment reports <laughs> and curriculum, you know. Um, so I just gravitate towards, um, people who write, I feel that. Um, in graduate school, I um, quickly like got to know all the MFA grads on the poetry side um, and organized group studio visits and um, sort of felt like I went to school with, with their class as well. I just made a point of being at all the readings and, and connecting there and they have um, I just feel like I have so many, I'm speaking about them as one big group because I have so many examples in my head right now of, of individuals that have um, made way for me to articulate my work. Um, they speak about it better than I do. They um, give me ideas. Um, I just feel very much akin to, uh, to writers of, of fiction and of poetry. Um, I love to steal their lines um, with credit for titles. I love um, hearing uh, live readings. So it's more of just a, um, just such a respect and admiration for uh, that art form. It's not one I've ever pretended to be a part of. It's just one that I've like, tried to be really close to at all times, yeah. Well, and I guess I would say, like, because you're working with books, like, you're <laughs> yeah. already there. Like, you're making poetry in the visual form, right? Like, I mean. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and when people talk about work being poetic, it's, it's, it's such a blanket term almost. It's, it can almost mean nothing. Um, but at the same time, it's the... Um, it's such a high compliment, you know, I feel that there's just, when you say that, I, I think that what people are saying is like, you may be somewhere else, right? Like you, when I saw the work or when I read this work of art, my mind was in, I wasn't here anymore. And that's um, just an aim of mine in, in creating. I, I, I love that idea of, dislocation both like recording it in the landscape but also like dislocating yourself from your present spot that you stand um and yeah and i think books really help they aid that like they they do a lot of the work for you as an artist because they're already putting you in that language and that um tradition of escape right 
And it's an intimate space, right? Like you're, it's one-on-one -on -one because you're holding it or you're, you know, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, um, and it requires a physical uh, commitment. Yeah. Uh, Elisa asks, Kelda, do you have any favorite poets at the moment? Oh, such a good question. Uh, well, the one that um, is jumping to my mind right at the second is Amy Hempel, who writes um, a lot about the animal world. And um, I just get so much from her work. It's just one of uh, just what came to mind right off the bat. But I have many and I'd love to talk more about it. <laughs> Uh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, Amanda, um, can you talk about a little bit um, your printmaking process in that, um, let's see, uh, Nikki asks, um, what draws you to printmaking as a process that generates multiples um, when your work has such a strong element of drawing? Yeah, um, Kelda and I sort of did a, talked a little before this, and, and this was something that we both were really interested in, in having a conversation about. Um, uh, I definitely like the, um, and I know Kelda's gonna probably say the same thing, <laughs> the mediated mark, you know, that it's mediated through um, some sort of uh, technique um, in some ways, but then to be able to like, then add to it, um, so, Okay, so instead of an addition of 20 of something, I have 20, uh, I have the ability to experiment 20 times with something, right? I have that same basis for each um, of those, I, I start at the same place for each of those prints, but then I can start drawing on top of them and doing different things. Like when I do the first thing, it'll make me think of something else that I can do on the second print that I can sort of, work differently on the third print. Um, and so it's sort of just that process of, I love the, the, the mediated mark um, that like, it's not a direct mark, but then also pairing it with the, with the direct mark and, and figuring out what I can do on top of that as well. So yeah. Really quickly. Yes. Um, I think that that is really interesting to me too. And I feel like a lot of the artists in the show work that way and so I thought that was really interesting as well and I'm um, making my students do that right now too and they're like what <laughs> but I think I mean I don't know maybe this will resonate with either or both of you like I feel like that sort of um way of making is kind of uh, maybe that ties to space and place of here is this particular kind of space and then we can explore where that goes um, in all these different ways um, and that these different perspectives on this one thing. Yeah, I mean, really think about uh, what you think about any one topic even and like all of the subcategories and the offshoots like even as you're thinking about something, um, how that can actually lend itself to this kind of thing as well. That's, that was weird, but um, <laughs> I'll get back to it. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah. But Amanda talking about that, like the way you think about things, like my mind just goes to collage and edges and like that to me is a huge part of the draw and, and the how formulating the image and maybe I'm um I read Emily's qu question so I might be already starting to think about that but uh, yeah. <laughs> I haven't read yeah just um you know Amanda what is the author's name the um the one that, uh that you were doing your piece on for Puerto Rico we were reading one of her short stories and um talking about how she just like you couldn't really find the edges. There were these two parallel stories happening simultaneously and it was really difficult to, to understand which narrative you were in. And so you were like hunting through the story for this like edge. It was just a little detail, but it, it helped you understand you were in a new space or a new texture. And um, 
And that's I, funny because, sorry, just real quickly, yeah. when we were having a conversation about it, I offered it to you as like, this is what I'm going to do it on. And you were like, I had such a hard time figuring out where I was going. I was like, oh, I like that fluidity, like sort of just really worked for me. Like I just got it. Mm -hmm. I got that like you're changing back and forth like so quickly. So yeah. So. Yeah, it's, I mean, and I think that that's compositionally and how, um, sorry, Claire, if I'm taking this in a different way, yeah. but um, compositionally how I build in, is to try for that, like that confusion um, mm -hmm. up against like a real ostensible change. So like, okay, I know I'm in this different color field now, but am I underneath or above it? Like I can't quite understand my footing. And so when I'm composing textures and shapes, I'm looking for, for those moments and those moments kind of drive me. And I think that's how the, um, how the compositions get a little weird, um, which I just uh, love that description. And um, partly that, and partly that I oftentimes will work with scraps the way, they're, the way they are, the way they're cut. So if they're in a shape I would never have dreamed of, that's sort of my starting block. Mm -hmm. That's um, beautiful because I, I had marked this as something to sort of bring up at some point was um, I listened to the uh, New Yorker Poetry podcast <clears throat> and uh, Kwame Dawes, um, there's a little quote from him that I thought was amazing because they were just talking, they read, you know, they read the poem and then they talk about with the um, poet about it and he said, the poem is really a discovery for me. I'm trying to figure out where it is, right? Like it's... I think that that's just absolutely beautiful. It's like you start with something and figure out how to work with it. Like, well, this is what I got. What am I going to do with it now? Mm -hmm. That same kind of idea. Yeah, and you know when you found it. Um, it still might not be where you want it to be, but you know when it's finally re revealing itself and it's there. Yeah. So the question from Emily is, um, you know, we've touched on it a little bit, but I'm interested in how both of you deconstruct the space, but also reimagine it in unexpected ways. Both of your compositions are not formulaic, but weird, broken, raw, and beautiful. I would love to hear how you build. Yeah, I already talked about it a little. Amanda, do you want to, I'm going to try to move to a lighter spot. Um, sometimes it's um, just putting up with, I, get, I, I sort of said it too, but putting up with what you started with, like you have to kind of, um, if, I, if I started someplace, the, the progression is gonna be so different than what I can um, get, that I, I can't formulate how I'm gonna get to the end of it, right? It's just this sort of, well, that's good enough, kind of like I sort of working around. It's, Sorry, it's not very uh, particular. It sort of has this sort of uh, slippery sense of, of making, but um, I, I find that that question was, first of all, a really uh, great compliment. Yeah. So thank you. <laughs> um, but also um, it, it is one of those things that um, it just, you know, I, I constantly experiment so that I can, you know, find myself in a new place so that I can, I feel like I'm going somewhere as opposed to like, you know, um, sit and kind of work through the same idea until it's done. I'm like, my mind is off to something else anyway. So I may as well follow my mind, right? In some ways. Great, thank you. Um, so we have about five minutes left um, in the hour and um, just want to ask both of you, is there anything else that you, you want to specifically talk about or should we throw it to the audience for any remaining questions? I've got tons of things to talk about, but I think the questions from the audience are sort of more interesting in some ways. Yeah. So if you have a question, um, we'd love to hear it. Um, I think we have answered the ones that are in the 
in the chat right now, but um, yeah, please let us know. So the answer is yes, we will talk about other things. <laughs> cool. <laughs> um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, one of the things that I'm really excited about right now, uh, you might see some of the stuff behind me, is I went to, um, Lori Talcott came to school um, to give a talk and, you know, she talks about her work. She's a, she's a fantastic artist and jeweler um, and her, her work is sort of deep in like this mythological and like alchemical stuff, but she just threw out there this idea of false work, which is all of the things that sort of support when you're like building a bridge, all of those things that support that bridge while it's being built. Um, mm -hmm. I, it just like, I just stopped because I didn't know there was a name for it. Mm -hmm. And then you start to think not only like, oh yeah, I'm interested in that, just like seeing what's behind me, I'm interested in that, but also like thinking about all of the things that got you as a person to this point that are the false work for you being who you are is also really interesting to me, a little mm -hmm. bit cheesy, but you know, so it's just this like, it, it can just kind of billow out from there. That's, I want to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I love that because that's what you always like take photographs of. I mean, we teach across the highway from um, the Northgate light rail and like Amanda was always taking pictures of the scaffolding it took to actually build the light rail <laughs> oh, <laughs> structure. Or like like yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, so that's what you're, you're drawn to in a real way. Yeah. And then you think about it, like, you can kind of dig different holes and dig them sort of deeper and deeper, no matter mm -hmm. what. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, that's really interesting. Um, I mean, for me, I guess I think about it more like, um, you know, it's all the things that you do that support that final work. But, you know, while you're in it, like, how do you know? I mean, I guess I would say for me, like, sometimes I don't know if it's that support work or if it's that um, final work. And like, is there a point where you start to know that? And how do you know that? Yeah, um, I'm not actually even talking about the support work, because I, I think that everything is, is the work. Like everything I make is, which is probably silly, but it's more like just all those other things, like me going on Saturday mornings running with my friends, that's supporting me being in the studio. You know, all of that kind of comes together um, to work that way. Um. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I'm really, to Claire's question, like when is it, the final work and when is it not and and I'm super interested in that and I think part of that is like I just need to give myself credit for <laughs> whatever it is that I'm managing to make so I'm like maybe this is it <laughs> um but also like that's what that show at Soil is going to be about and which will be about next year um is just um it was specifically about um, working artists that worked outside the home and also had young children. Um, but like, what is it, the inconsequential work is sometimes the more fresh and surprising and um, potentially raw and weird to use that compliment again, um, that I think is not necessarily what we put out there and, um, but it's what it's born of a certain desperation or, or, or labor. And I find that really interesting. Emily um, continues her question, like the, the bridge between abstraction and representation, I guess, as well. Um, I don't know if that's... <laughs> I'm trying to read it. Um, Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either. I like I take a lot of pictures, so a lot of um with a with a Holga like double and triple exposed. So it's it's sort of like abstracting while taking the pictures and those are sort of the basis for a lot of things I do. So mm -hmm. I find that when I am using photographic imagery, it's it's all from the time that I took photos with a um 
with a cam, you know, with a film camera. And I just am not getting it from my digital photos. And um, I just don't want to work from them, the photos I take now digitally. And maybe that has something to do with nostalgia, like I was talking about, and maybe I will in, in, in a time in the future. But for now, those, um, there's a photographic mark that's so much different now that I'm really uh, more interested in working with. And like Amanda said, like somehow obscuring it or there's a grain there that maybe as a printmaker I'm drawn to as well. Um, yeah, yeah and, and oftentimes representational imagery for me and spaces um, are more indicative of an interior landscape and then and the more abstracted landscapes actually are more representational for me of, of a physical place so there's like a swapping there that i think is maybe just um avoidance or <laughs> um or a coping mechanism but that's how i think of them like like this snapshot of the mount st helens and the eruption and then also the actual architectural find in maputo is is more talking about an internal state of mind, um, whereas that like more watery, washy um, abstraction it is referencing more like the actual terrain we live upon and in. So we're at 7.32. I know that we wanted to do a, an hour, um, but we do have some other questions. So um, Calda and Amanda, are you feeling like we should? say goodbye at this point or do you I'm leaving it to Kelda because she's constrained a little bit more yeah <laughs> yeah no I can stay on I'd love to read through them yeah okay um all right if I read for you to present okay so um the next one was um from John um for both of you now that you have taught a term online what do you see as the future of teaching online what did you learn already big question <laughs> That's a big question. Amanda, you're, you're in it right now. Still. I feel like teaching it the first time, at, at the end, I was just like, I don't know. But teaching it the second time, it's starting to make more sense to me. And I think part of that is um, in the classroom, I, I am a little bit more controlling than I am uh, online. And so just, right, like, because you're like, I want this here now at this point, you know, please just give it to me, whatever it is. No, you're not doing it right. No, I'm, I'm not like that. But, <laughs> but um, I, I think that just uh, allowing for a little bit more freedom and just knowing that people are going to kind of come to things sort of differently. I um, told you earlier that I'm getting my students to weekly, they're doing an experimentation within. So I'm teaching screen printing and I'm just like, just experiment. Here's some things. You can play with those. You can try something new. You can do whatever you want. But w once a week, you're going to have to give me one piece that you've experimented with. And I feel like they're learning so much more from that, from having to just play um, than, than any assignment. So I'm, I'm open to just like kind of le letting go of the leash a little bit. Nice. Yeah. I think that um, I love that because I was talking to a friend who is a uh, high school teacher and she teaches art and she's, yeah, I think that that doing and learning um, and trying these different things that you know, maybe wouldn't be so, we wouldn't allow ourselves to try maybe non pandemic times. Like those things are what's exciting. Um, Agreed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And maybe like that will actually keep them making in the long run. Like, oh, mm -hmm. that thing that like I came to by myself, you know, that I yeah. found on my own. No. That's what, yeah, I was going to say that my more optimistic side or more optimistic days, I, I am like, this maybe will prevent the, the drop off the art, like I majored in art, and now I don't make anything anymore. Because 
it was so handed to students in a way um uh, they fought for it too but like the space the facilities the instruction the peers um the feedback and it's an intoxicating place to be in it and it is what launches so many of us into this field but then when they graduate from school it's so expensive to have access to a press um, to have access to materials and a lot of you know they aren't sure how to make it work in their little apartment or wherever it is and so this is almost more realistic practical training for how to be an artist even though so much is lost but and then like amanda is saying they they're figuring out so much on their own um that hopefully it will stick stick with them so i have to believe that otherwise it's a bit too depressing i mean i saw one of my students not not this quarter students but a previous student on the side of the road during a protest screen printing black lives matter um uh posters um and handing them out to people i mean how amazing is that like amazing I love I know, right? like they can just you know take it outside the realm of even fine art you know if they wanted to you know they can actually do the political thing too so yeah awesome um i'm gonna move to a related question that and comment so peter gross says i like that answer a lot amanda <laughs> Um, and then Nikki, or, <laughs> Lori um, says on a more practical question, how do you teach silk screen online? Do they have all the equipment? <laughs> they have a kit which includes a screen and a squeegee and all the stuff. Um, I don't have, we're not doing photo emulsion, um, but we do have 20 screen presses at school that I have um, checked out to them and that they're going to give back at the end of the quarter. Um, so yeah, it's working pretty well. Cool. Nice. It's much easier than just plain old printmaking. Like, like here, I'm going to teach you all of printmaking. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we have another question from Paula who's saying, thinking as a sculpture and installation artist, I know that my work will mostly be viewed as an image and that thought seeps into my work as I make it. What will the image be? Curious if you thought about um, in the past, that in the past, if, or if you are more now. Um, and I think the question starts one above that. Oh, thank you, yeah. sorry. <laughs> Digital um, versus physical. Yeah, it's, we're losing stuff, right? Yeah. Like there's all this detail that is lost necessarily online i think i thought about i i don't think i think about that more now necessarily maybe that started with instagram or with self-promotion you start thinking about how is this going to look on a screen um and with the immediacy of digital photography it, and the way that it can flatten an image can be helpful like it can help you step back from the work um you know i have a really a small space that I work in. So sometimes I have to take a picture to get like some distance and put a white wall around it or like understand how, how it makes shadows on, on the table or on the wall. So I do use um, photographs and I, I agree with you. I'm in the same boat that that does seep into to, um, my mind as I'm making it, but um, also just about, yeah, color choices, but I don't think I've left anything out because it wouldn't come across digitally ever. I've never actually made a, a decision. That's just a maybe persistent thought that that is with me. So, um, and then I do feel that it's not translated the same digitally. Um, I'm happy we have the digital tools we have and the way to see art that way. I certainly just as a um, parent like I I really rely on that way of viewing art even before um, the lockdown but it, it's absolutely best to see it in the physical sense and especially and with book arts I, I truly feel that it's very hard to understand um, the form yeah. yeah Amanda any thoughts about that yeah I don't I yeah I just make the work 
I mean, it, it, that's basically between me and the work. Like, it's just a conversation that's going back and forth uh, between me and the work. And so I, I'm not thinking about the digital world. I, I, I mourn a little bit when I realize the loss in the digital world, because everything that I make has sparkle to it, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> there is shiny and sparkle in everything I make. <laughs> There's a little iridescence, <laughs> which does not come across that well. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, no, I don't, I don't, I mean, as a sculptor, I think you would have to think about that more, right? Like Paula would have to think about that because, you know, the thing can't exist in the world all the time where it's much easier for a piece to kind of, you know, um, ha to be able to be in communion with a piece um of two-dimensional art a little bit great well thank you so much um to everyone who came to kelda and to amanda um i'm looking forward to seeing the show in person and i encourage all of you to go um to see the sparkle <laughs> <laughs> now i said that i'm not sure that piece has sparkle but <laughs> with the right. metaphorical sparkle um <laughs> And um, if you would like to let everyone know where they can find your work in the future. Um, Amanda? Um, I have a website that I don't keep up to date very well, but I try, amandanoles.com, and I show at um, G. Gibson Projects. So we'll see. <laughs> Excellent, thank you, and Kelda. I'm going to write in the chat. Um, my website is keldamartinson.com and I um, do sort of post little experiments on Instagram at kelda underscore gene. Just discovered there's another kelda gene out there. Dog mom. Um, <laughs> and I uh, show with at J. Reinhardt Gallery. And um, yeah. Great. Well, thank you for the extra 13 minutes. We very much appreciate it. If um, everybody wants to turn on their video and wave bye, we can do that. <laughs> or we don't have to, um, your choice. But thank you so much. <laughs> <everyone. Hang on. laughs> it's great to be in conversation with you. <laughs> thank you so much, Claire. That was really great. <laughs> thank you so much. For My your pleasure. <laughs> but, yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> They're sparkles. <laughs> <laughs>